Hi guys and welcome back to Rachel's Enchanting Cakes. I'm so sorry it's been such a long time since we've had such new content but we've recently moved home but it's been worth it as you can see I've now got my own cake studio. Now today I'm going to show you all how to make this adorable 3D EO cake. Shall we give him a little twirl? It's literally just cake, but I've used lots of cake, lots of filling like I always do, and Rice crispy Treats. I guide you through everything step by step on this tutorial. I've used my hands to shape most of the things on the cake, so you do actually only need limited tools. I just want to encourage you all to give it a go. If I can do it, you can. If you like what you see, please do subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and happy baking, guys. And I'll be back soon now with an awful lot more content. Now I've got this studio. So the first thing that we're going to make is the basic shape for Eeyore's body. Now for this, all I have baked are two half ball cakes and a round cake. Now you can do any size you want. For the purpose of this tutorial, as you can see, I have stuck to the six inch sized cakes, but the bigger the cake, the more people you're feeding, you could do two half, 10 inch balls, and you can have as many layers in the center as you want and make them as big as you want, because all of the body will just be the cake. So firstly, what I want to do, I want to take one half ball cake, and I'm just gonna trim a little bit off the bottom have to be perfect this is just so it's going to sit on there much better than it would if it was the complete bowl I just want to add a little bit of buttercream you'll also notice that I've placed it quite far to the back of this board rather than directly in the center that's just because I want to leave room for the arms and the legs. I will leave you a link to both the buttercream recipe and the actual Victoria sponge cake recipe in the description below this video. So the way I like to fill my cake, I like an awful lot of filling and an awful lot of jam. And simply cover the whole of the cake apart from this top part until you are happy with it and place it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. This is what you are aiming to achieve. I've just left this in the fridge for about 30 minutes just to prevent the bottom half from bulging because I've added so much filling. Now we're simply going to repeat what we did with the first cake. To do now I'm just going to place this in the fridge and I'm going to let it set again before I continue to crumb coat the whole cake so I've just taken it out of the fridge again and now before we do any more crumb coating I just want to take a small amount off the top I have a four inch round cake board where I have drilled a hole in the center and that is how much I'm wanting to actually take off the top. So use that as a guide. That should just about do it. Now I want to add a little bit of internal support. I want to stop this cake from moving from side to side. So here I have a poly dowel. Now I've already cut it down. You want part of the poly dowel still sticking up out of the cake. That's going to be for the head. What I want to do first, where this hole is on here, I'm just going to use this, just to poke a hole, just so I can see where the dowel needs to then go. And I'm just going to feed this gently through the centre of the cake, right until it touches the baseboard. So if I just pull that further forward for you, that's what you're looking for. You can always cut more off the top if needs be. But whilst it's supported, all we're going to do now is finish 
crumb coating this cake and then we're just going to leave it in the fridge. Literally just cover all of it now, including the top, place it back in the fridge, but this time leave it for about an hour to an hour and a half, just so everything's completely set before we start adding the arms, the legs, all the fondant accents and especially the head. Whilst our cake is in the fridge, I want to make a start on the actual Rice Krispie Treats. These are absolutely delicious, very versatile and easy to use and we're going to be using them for the arms, the legs and the head. This amount here will just do the arms and the legs because we're going to be doing the head a little later on. What you're going to need is 300 gram of marshmallows to every 150 gram of Rice Krispies. You'll also notice here in the pan I have just placed some real butter in there. All I'm going to do is melt 300 gram of these marshmallows in this pan off camera. You do this on an extremely low heat just to prevent the marshmallows from burning and the butter inside this pan will also help prevent that from happening. We will then mix both the melted marshmallows and the Rice Krispies together. And once we've done that, we will have our Rice Krispie treat. As you can see, I have just finished melting the marshmallows in my pan. All you then need to do is add your Rice Krispie treats and just give it a really good stir. And that is the sort of consistency you're looking for. Now we're going to just leave these just to cool down a little bit because they'll be a bit too hot to use and then we're going to start shaping the arms and the leg. I haven't finished this leg just yet, I've just started to build it up just so that you can see what I'm actually going to do. Now working with Rice Krispie Treats is very easy but it's also a very sticky mess. i found if you grease your hands with some stalk or butter first, you simply then start, I've got my Rice Krispie Treats just to one side here, they've cooled down slightly but they're still in a state where they can be modelled. And I'm now going to make a similar shape for the other side. And just keep on going through that process until the legs are exactly how you want. As you can see, I've just made this leg here and now again I'm just going to repeat the process literally just got enough Rice Krispie Treats for all four legs. I'm going to keep manipulating all of these legs until I am happy and then the next job will be to crumb coat the Rice Krispie Treats before we actually cover this first part in fondant. You can see how it's already taken shape. Now all we need to do is make up some more buttercream and just simply crumb coat this just like we did the cake. We're then going to place it back into the fridge and just leave it to set completely before I show you how to cover it with a layer of fondant we're then going to make the head afterwards and start to decorate with all the fondant accents. So just like before, this time I've got a smaller knife instead of a palette knife. Some of the lovely buttercream, which there is a recipe for in the description below this video. And you'll literally just go over your Rice Krispie Treats, take your time, it is a quite time consuming task. I'm doing all of this back to front so that you can see what I'm doing and just cover both of the legs and the arms. The next step is to actually cover the cake. Now for this particular cake I'm using the Renshaw Atlantic Blue and I'm going to be covering the body, the arms and the legs with 1,250 gram. So you'll need five packets of this. I've got a large rolling pin. I'm 
choosing to roll my fondant out between spaces. Now, if you've never watched any of my tutorials before, these spaces are exactly five millimeters thick, and it just means as I roll the fondant in between them, the fondant will stay the same thickness and consistency. I've got some smoothers for when it's finally on the cake and a sharp knife. So let's make a start. All I have done here is kneaded my Atlantic Blue Renshaw's fondant and you want to simply sprinkle your surface with some icing sugar. Using a rolling pin and your spacers, start to roll out your fondant, but try and keep it in a circular shape. So if you just roll for a little bit, pick it up, turn it round, make sure there's plenty of icing sugar there. This is a very sticky colour to work with. And just keep on rolling. Add this fondant to the cake. Simply lift it using your rolling pin and just bring the cake more central. Gently roll it over. Now, you've got plenty of time, but we do need to work relatively fast. You want to start negotiating all of the pleats and picking up all of that lovely detail that you've added with your Rice Krispie Treats. get the basic idea. Now before I trim anything off, I'm just going to neaten this up and then I will smooth him out. And this is the sort of finish you are aiming to achieve. Now remember we've got an awful lot more fondant ascents to add to this. Obviously we're going to be doing the head separately, but now you want to put this back in the fridge. You'll find it an awful lot easier to lift and place on a decorated cake drum or a plain cake drum if this fondant and buttercream is lovely and hard. What I want to do just before we add the cake is simply cover the cake drum as the base. This can be decorated once the cake is finished but we need that layer of fondant underneath. I wanted to go with grass so I'm using the Renshaw's Lincoln Green. It's a lovely colour for grass. I'm just going to do the same process like I did covering the cake. I have exactly 750 gram to cover a 12 inch square. So just like before, all I have done is rolled out my 750 gram of Lincoln Green fondant in between my five millimeter spaces. So how do we attach it to this board? Which I do get asked a lot. All you want is some cooled down boiled water and a brush. Simply cover your cake drum. Use your rolling pin. Now it's time to actually add the cake to the drum. Um, I've made a little mistake just here, but I'm going to be covering this with more grass and I'll show you how to do that later. We need to work relatively fast. I've literally just taken this out of the fridge. Now, if you remember what I said about all of that lovely buttercream going really hard, this is what happens. You can literally just peel away your parchment, pop your hand underneath. Try not to touch the sides of the cake because it's going to start to sweat the longer it's out. I want him around there. And this is the nerve wracking bit. This is when you go drop. Whew, and he's on. <laughs> All those cake decorators have those moments. Now we are going to start assembling it so that we can do the head. So we need more support in there. Now these are just normal wooden cake dowels. So we've got this massive poly dowel in the middle for a reason. Our four inch round board will be going over, if I just push this forward a bit more, there we go. Our four inch round board will be going over that poly dowel. 
But then you've still got the weight of the head pushing down on this cake and you know how much filling I've put in there. We need to protect it more. So to do that, you get your cake down and just push it straight through the cake first. Then taking a pencil, just mark. I'm just going to put another line just a little bit further down because I didn't want to touch the cake with the pencil. I've found the easiest way to cut these is with using a pipe cutter. Now if I just move Eeyore, these are fantastic. This has only ever been used on cake and it stops. You know all those splinters that you can get when you're using wooden dowels and you literally just go round and round and round. Keep tightening it up and it cuts through beautifully. And you want three more dowels. to finally add this board. So firstly I've got a small amount of leftover buttercream and you just want to place this on the top where all those dowels are. That's more than enough, it's just so the board has something to adhere to. That won't be going anywhere, that is really really secure. Now we're going to have to let this cake sweat just so it can dry slightly because I am wanting to actually build the head on the cake I'm not going to be building it separately and then placing it onto the cake so it's completely normal for your cake to sweat when it comes out of a fridge it's condensation it's just reaching room temperature that's all if you can make your room colder if you've got a portable air conditioning unit or if it's quite cool outside and you open the door this will dry an awful lot quicker. The next step will be to repeat the process we did earlier with the Rice Krispie Treats. I'm going to make some more of those. And then you're going to watch me model the actual head. So to make the Rice Krispie Treats, again, I have just melted down 300 gram of marshmallows. And in here, I have 150 gram of Rice Krispies. Just repeat the process by adding the Rice Krispies to the marshmallows and giving them a good stir. So whilst I'm waiting for these Rice Krispie treats just to cool down slightly, um, I've just got a Dresden tool here. What happens when you put a cake in the fridge? The fondant doesn't actually set. It will go hard, but then it starts to sweat, comes to room temperature, and that's when your fondant finally starts to dry. So this is still nice and soft and it hasn't actually set. So using the Dresden tool, because Eeyore's, he's got like lines on him, he's not perfect. I just want to do a few, not too many, indentations. I think that is more than enough. It just adds a little bit more feeling to it instead of it just being too smooth. So. The Rice Krispies. Now, I'm going to be using stalk again just to grease my hands. Now, the head shape, we're going to be coming up so it's like a ball. But then you've got his mouth. Now, I want his mouth actually touching the body. So the cake's going to be supporting everything and this is just going to stop the head from falling off. So that's the sort of shape that we're going for. So I'm going to be doing it at different angles so that you can see it and so that I can actually see what I'm doing as well. And I'll just gradually turn it. That's the sort of shape, look at it from the side, that you're looking for. Remember, we've got buttercream and more fondant to go on to this. But when I look at him from the front, I can see Eeyore already, even though he's not covered. I'm just going to perfect this slightly. I don't want to bore you to death, but I'm literally just going to be using my fingers and doing exactly what you can see me doing right now. And the next task will be to cover the top with buttercream, just the head. And then finally, that final layer of fondant before we can decorate your prop plate. So this is what I have so far. 
I've finished manipulating him. I've kept that nice long nose coming out there. And now he just literally needs a little bit of buttercream. Now, if we just recap, for the actual cake, um, we used 400 gram of buttercream. I used two lots in total. That was to both fill and crumb coat the entire cake. Then I made one more batch of buttercream to do the arms and the legs. But we had a little bit left over from that batch of buttercream. And there is just enough to cover the head. So in total, so far, I have used 600 grams of butter and 900 grams of icing sugar, 300 gram to every 200 gram. I am going to want to make some more buttercream towards the end and that will be for the base just because I'm wanting to add a grass effect. But you, there are different methods you can actually do for grass and I will leave another tutorial link for you below this video to show you different edible grass techniques. So to cover Eeyore's head, we're just going to do it like we did the arms and the legs. But this time we've got to be extra careful because you don't want to be getting any grease on the rest of Eeyore's body. So just taking the small knife, literally just go around all of your Rice Krispie treats. I'm not going to bore you to death and do all of this on camera. I shall do this off camera. And when I've completed him, I'm then going to put him in the fridge for 30 minutes before we actually cover the head with fondant. All I have done here is what we did previously with the body and the board. So I've rolled out my leftover Atlantic Loop fondant and one more packet just to be on the safe side in between my five millimetre spacers. We are going to be using the leftover fondant for the ears. We're going to be turning that into modelling paste afterwards. But you just want to lift it up with your rolling pin. Now this is going to be a little harder for me to move because he is getting heavy now. I'll try and get him more central. Then get your sharp knife and literally I'm going to kneel down now, gently go under the rim. And just keep on smoothing him until you're happy with the finished result. And Eeyore is finally taking shape. Now you can understand why shaped cakes take such a long time. We now have our blank canvas to add all the decoration to. Here I have coloured my own fondant. So I started off with some Renshaw White. And to get this flesh colour, I've used the Sugar Flare Chestnut. It's brilliant for it. We are placing this as the mouth, it's going on the front here. So to make this more simple, what I want to do first is turn this more into a modelling paste just so it doesn't lose its shape. So for that I'm adding a very small amount of tylo powder. Normally you'd add one level teaspoon to every 250 gram. I don't have 250 gram here so I'm adding an awful lot less. And you just knead it in as easy as that you've just made your own modeling paid now i want to roll this out so some icing sugar i'm not using spaces this time this can be relatively thin so i'm just going to judge it as i go i just have a look at the front of the oil so if you look at the front you're wanting to roll more of an oblong shape if you start rolling in those shapes to begin with find it's an awful lot easier to apply to the actual cake. And then I'm just going to hold it onto the cake to get an idea. Lovely. That's the right size and I'm keeping it that size because the rest needs to be trimmed off. To make this stick I'm just going to use a small amount of water. So here is my cooled down boiled water, a brush, so, see what I've 
just done, show you what I've just done there. I'm not actually cutting it all the way yet. I'm going to do an indentation in there. And then his cheeks, because he's got a lovely big smile. That can come round. To add the lines before this starts to set. Start with the centre just here. Let's have a little look. Wow, I'm actually surprised I've managed to keep that symmetrical. That can take practice, so don't worry if it's not, it's still going to be a little cuter. Exactly what I've been dreaming of for the past two weeks. Okay, yeah, dreaming, seriously. When those cake decorators try to figure things out, or oh, we've got a crazy idea in our head, we just lay in bed at night and it's all we can think about. So this little guy is coming together beautifully. For the nostrils, um, just before we do the ears, remember this is modeling paste, it's gonna set. I'm gonna use a bowl tool. I want to use a smaller end um, around that area. I'm really happy with that. He's working. <laughs> right then, um, neaten him up. Take your time with it all. That's the most important thing. Take your time. And we're now going to start on the ears. Right then, for the ears, uh, we're going to be using the leftover Atlantic Blue, but also the Renshaw Fuchsia Pink for the inside. Now I am going to be turning both into modelling paste. So, because they're both dark colours, we're going to have to wash our hands in between, otherwise we're going to risk staining. And so you're not in such a rush, when the ears are laid on the board, if we keep covering them up just with a simple food grade plastic bag, it helps to stop the modelling paste from drying out. Now I am going to be also using model, uh, sorry, edible glue this time to actually stick the ears on, not water. And I'm also going to be using more tylo powder than before. Because the ears, even though they're going to be touching the cake, they're still going to, they, they want to be relatively long, they want to come to about down here, all the way from the top and look semi-gravity defined. So it needs to be really, really stable. So I'm gonna add one and a bit of a teaspoon of tile powder just to turn it into modeling paste and knead this in first. Okay, now we want to roll this out onto our work surface. I'm going to use my knife. Okay, remember what I mentioned with the bags? I'm just going to cover that. Now you need to wash your hands and wipe down your work surface. Now we're ready to use the Fuchsia Pink. Now I've only taken out half of the packet because it's just going inside of each ear. So this time we're not going to need as much Tylo powder. So I'm only adding a very small amount. Knead this in like we did before. What we want to do now is stick on the fuchsia pink using our edible glue. So if I start with the one closest to me and pick this up first, I want it flapping and all stuck to the actual cake, which is why it needs to go on before it starts to fully set. I'm going to place edible glue. This is going to be tricky, I'm not going to lie to you. How adorable is he looking? I think we have done the most difficult parts now. You can keep on reshaping these ears until they start to go hard, you know, get bends in them and all sorts. Um, what I want to make a start on now 
is just adding a little bit of colour to the feet, the eyes, the hair, and then we've just got the board to decorate so he is almost there. He's really coming together, isn't he? We're going to add the eyes now. Um, I've just got some white Renshaw's fondant for the eyes, jet black for the pupil and the hair, and I'm choosing to use the Renshaw's turquoise blue for the actual pupil of the eye. I, like, I absolutely love this colour, it's one of my favourites. So we're going to start with the main outer section of the eye that's obviously white. Now I think there might be a little bit too much here, so if I just cut some off the end. I'm rolling it into a sausage shape first, so I can cut it bang down the centre, and then these two halves should be exactly the same amount. And then just roll these into more of an oval and push down. Because I've already got these two lovely indentations in the actual cake where I can place them. I don't want to place them on just yet. I want to get them the same size, I want to get them identical. Okay. And I also want to check that they're not too deep when they actually go in. Because if they are, we might just have to take a little bit more off. I'm still not sticking them on though, just yet. Now we're going to be using the Turquoise, and I'm going to do it the same way I've just added those. The sort of effect that I'm trying to achieve. So, off camera, um, I have just completed this eye. I'm going to do the other eye so you can see exactly what I have done. You'll also notice a couple of indentations just under each eye. For that, I've just used the Dresden tool just to add a little bit more character. So, we're going to the black fondant now. Now, I want this part, so that is slightly thicker and we place it just above the indentation that we added earlier. Hair, really easy. So for the black hair, roll it into a cone shape. The hair's obviously going to be the end part. So for the feet, really simple. Now I've coloured this one myself using the Americolor Violet. Absolutely beautiful purple colour that you get. All I've done is roll two pieces into the same size balls, place it onto your work surface and push down. We're wanting the shape for the bottom of the foot. We don't have to do it all on the board, we're going to do a lot on the cake. So then pick this up and just place it onto the foot and push directly on there. Now that's not sticking very well, so I'm just going to use a little bit of water just on the back, just to start it off. And two. So you get the basic idea, just neaten them up. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to make one more batch of buttercream and I'm going to show you how to make this base look like grass before we make the final part, Eeyore's tail. Now for the grass, I'm actually using a buttercream technique. You're going to need the Gem 233 piping nozzle and this is basically just a small grass nozzle and it gives a lovely grass effect. There are a few more techniques that you can use to create grass and I will leave a link for you to that tutorial in the description below this video. So all I've done is made another batch of my buttercream. If I just put this more central for you. I've made it green using the Americolor Leaf Green. I love the Americolors. And then you literally just start to pipe so push and pull. I won't 
bore you to death, you can see the effect that it gives. I'm going to completely cover the rest of this cake drum and then we're going to make Eeyore's tail. How adorable does he look and how effective is that grass? Now, to do the tail and the pink bow, I'm using the leftover modelling paste from the ears. So I've got the fuchsia pink. What you want to do first is just roll this out. Now, we don't want it too thin. Just bear that in mind. So, using your knife. I'm just going to leave that on my board. So the actual tail, this is the easy part. Mind you, the bow is relatively easy as well. I know it's only a simple bow. You can go as complex as you want to. So this will be the actual tail. That has accidentally come off. And on the end of the tail, it has a shape to it. But I need it relatively long, so it's going to be coming down and then I want the bow on. So I think that might just be long enough. So we'll find out. That looks so cute already, can you see it? Really simple shapes, you've noticed I've not used any cutters. Now we just need a little bit of black fur, just like what we've got up here. You'll notice I haven't covered all of the back with um, the fur. Please remember this is just a tutorial. Um, so if you want to do that and you're making this for a customer, then by all means do so. But he looks amazing already, doesn't he? You've got to admit. So, all I'm going to do then for the end of the tail, and then it's complete, can you believe it, is what I did for the hair. So I'm just taking out small bits, that's a little bit too big. Making one end, when I, when I roll it into a sausage shape, I'm rolling that end thinner than the bottom. And then you just stick that into your buttercream and just build it up. So I will continue to do this for the end of the tail and then show you the finished result. And this is the finished result. How adorable is he? Shall we give him a little twirl? Remember, you can make him any size that you want. You can use any size to cake. If you wanted to, you could add some little flowers to the grass. Absolutely perfect. Give it a go, guys. And remember, if you do like what you see, please subscribe to the channel, share with your friends. Happy baking, and I'll be back soon with an awful lot more new tutorials.